happy July! My name is Beth and this is my floss tube number 12. Um, I have quite a bit of cross stitch to show you today as well as a shocking amount of haul. So stay tuned. Um, but first, a note, uh, there is just something I want to address right off the bat. Uh, lately in our community I've heard a lot of like, stick to cross stitch, this is no place for politics. Um, and I understand where that's coming from. I, I understand that um, a place for escape can be really helpful, that um, the news cycle can be really fatiguing, but I want to get a couple of things straight here. Uh, wearing a mask to protect others, being anti-racist, and affirming trans people's identities, these are not political issues. These are about human beings. Um, a discussion about politics might look like um, exploring the viability and impact of reallocating funds for police versus body cams and other things like that. Um, that's a political discussion. Saying that Black Lives Matter, that is not political. So with that out of the way, I just want to be upfront about what you can expect from me and my channel and my social media. On my social media, uh, you've probably noticed I discuss politics a lot. Um, I feel that my silence is like being complicit in the issue. That's my personal feeling. That's not shaming anybody else who is not choosing to speak about this issue or these issues, there are lots going on right now. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're on my social media, particularly my Instagram, you're gonna see politics. I do my best to keep the politics to my Instagram story. So if that's not really your thing, um, or you need a little bit of a break from that, you can expect that like the posts I make on Instagram is gonna be pretty free from that. Um, I do wanna say that whenever I talk about politics, I try to, I do my best to be respectful and thoughtful. And if you're seeing something different from me, I really, really hope that you hold me accountable because it is always my intent to be respectful and thoughtful. So, my channel, um, I know I'm making this message right now, um, but my channel is not going to be overtly political. You're going to see me stitching on charts that say Black Lives Matter, which, as I said before, to me is not political. Um, but I'm not really going to get into it. If you want to get into it with me, if you're into that, um, DM me on Instagram. I'm totally down. Um, but... Yeah, I think I just, I want to clear all of that up for anybody who may be struggling with what's going on in the community right now. And I do want to say that I really love our community and I believe that we can work hard to create a welcoming and inclusive environment for everyone. Um, I also believe that sometimes we need to be a little bit uncomfortable in order to grow and that we can always be better and it is our job to continue to strive to be better. Um, we all do that with our cross stitch, right? We're trying to get better at what we love. Um, we should always be striving to be better people as well. So I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Hopefully, um, if what I've said, if this channel still isn't your thing, that you can just click away and move on to watch somebody else. Um, but I, I really think that for the most part, this channel is not going to be off-putting to anybody while still staying true to what I believe and what's important to me. Okay, so now moving into some life things. I moved to a new house, which you can probably tell that my background is different. Um, and that's because I'm in my new office. 
Um, it's not fully set up yet. <laughs> you can see there's a big wall behind me with nothing on it. Um, I'm hoping to put something fun and interesting up back there. Of course, one of the first things I started working on was organizing my stitching supplies. <laughs> So yeah, this is by far the most organized my stitching has ever been and the most like dedicated space for my stitching that I've ever had, which is really exciting to me. It's all in one spot. Um, it's all in a way that makes sense to me. I couldn't be happier with what I've got going here. I do want to show you one thing. And that's these boxes. So we've got drawers here that pull out. These are meant for paper. I got these at uh, the container store. They come in a bunch of different colors. Um, and I'm using these for fabric storage. So I've got two of these boxes, so four drawers total. And uh, the drawers are by fabric type. So this whole top one is Ada. So I've got 16 count up here and then 18 count here. Uh, that was just because I have a lot of Ada right now in my stash. These may move around as I get more fabric of different types. Then the other box that's exactly the same as this, the top one is even weave and the bottom is linen. Um, but as I maybe join a fabric uh, of the month club or get a bunch of new stash in 40 count because I'm obsessed with 40 count now. <laughs> These drawers might have to um, shift around. We shall see how that goes in the future. The other new organizational bit for me is this binder. So I I think I've showed you in the past that my charts are all in a big binder like this. It's a one inch D-ring because D-rings are the best. Um, and that's like full of my charts. And I don't keep charts with my kitted projects in my project bags because I go off of digital. Um, even if I've got the physical chart, I scan it in and go off a digital copy. So. All of my charts are in there, including my current projects. But I had a bunch of half page charts and it was really frustrating me that they were falling all around inside the sheet protectors that I use. Um, so I decided to get some half page sheet protectors and a half page binder. So that's what I did. Um, I was really hoping that I could find half page sheet protectors that would fit in a regular size binder so that I could keep all of my charts in one place, but that doesn't appear to exist. <laughs> so I've just separated them. Um, so you can see like here. So my half page charts are in like this. Um, of course I have a few that are still too small, like, like this one. But as you can see, it only has a little, a little space to move around instead of like a lot of space to move around. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited about this one. I have to say, I'm a little bit frustrated. I have found two charts now that are, look like they're half size, but they're like maybe half an inch too big. <laughs> so I'm like, no. I found one that was just the cover was too big and the rest of the chart fit. So I might just like cut down the cover so it fits. Is that horrible? Please don't hate me. <laughs> I think I might do that. Maybe I'll just keep it in the folder pocket in the front of the binder. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm very excited about the organization and uh, I have a ton of stuff to scan so that I have it digitally. Um, I think I'm also going to start printing out because my color printer is out of storage now that we've moved. So I think I might start printing out just cover pages of my digital pattern so that I can flip through everything I have. Of course, that will be very, very useful for things like stash dives at uh, Black Needle Society uh, retreats. So we'll see if I can get my act together for that before Frogwarts in July. I don't know, we'll see. 
Um, okay. I think we're ready to start showing some cross stitch. I know we're many minutes into this video, but okay. Let's start with finishes because I have a finish. And I showed the beginning of this last time that I had started it and it didn't work out and I was gonna need to restart it. Um, so that's what I've got here. This was um, a design put together by me using alphabets that I got from, oh gosh, I think the designer is Happy Sloth on Etsy for the alphabets, both of them. And I love this. This is a quote most often attributed to Martin Luther King, but um, he adapted this quote from a much older quote. And I really like the older quote, as I said in my last video, but <laughs> this this version is much snappier <laughs> for a cross-stitch piece. Um, and this is something that really gives me hope in a challenging time. Um, I believe that we have to do the work to bend the arc of the universe towards justice, but that um, I have faith that we will do that, that we will be successful. So I'm glad to have that finished. Don't know what I'll do with it. Okay, next starts. I have this in a Love You More studio bag sleeve and it's got this little circle pattern on the inside but I really love the outside of this one. And I'll put a picture of this chart somewhere here because it's a digital one and I don't have it printed out yet. And that's how far I am. Now I will say, um, hopefully you saw the picture of the chart. Hopefully I remembered to put it in. Um, but this says like the matter part that goes down here. The letters are a little bit wonky and I'm thinking about modifying them just a little bit so they're slightly less wonky. But yeah, this is a good one to stitch because it's all one color, so it's pretty easy. It's a good travel project, uh, but it is nice and meditative. And uh, I've been enjoying stitching on that while I'm listening to audiobooks or podcasts or watching a movie, something like that. Okay, and I don't know what the designer is of that. I got that on Etsy, and I think the listing's been taken down. I don't know why it's been taken down. It's a little bit alarming that it's been taken down. I don't know if it was, um, if it didn't belong to that seller or what happened. Um, but if I figure it out, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Whips. First, I'll show you the one that's on my Q-snap. And that is my piano. Oh my gosh, from like, back here it looks so cool I spend so much of my time working on it with it like right up in my face and I can see all of the colors and it looks kind of strange but then when I put it back here it just looks like shadow oh I'm so so thrilled with this really really loving this that's making me miss playing a lot um when <laughs> when we moved my friends are now borrowing my keyboard because um, we needed to get out of the way for a little bit. Um, and so we have to find a new place for it in our new house. And of course I miss my actual real piano because a keyboard will never feel right to me. <laughs> but it's what I have space for right now. Um, I have a piano, I have a, grand, a baby grand piano back home. It's at my parents' house. And it is my intention to get it back from them in the next five years or less because they want to downsize and the alternative is it getting 
taken to another home, which I do not accept. <laughs> so I've got to quick buy a house <laughs> so that I have room for my piano. But um, yeah, really loving this one. And I just found out that my piano teacher um, that I went to all growing up is doing, um, she lives very far away from me now, but she's doing, um, ooh, I'm not in focus. She's doing FaceTime and Zoom lessons now. And I'm like, what if I took a lesson? <laughs> that would be so cool. Okay. And that was um, a WIPCO project, by the way. That's my, my project for June. And my intention for June was to get all the way to this side um, of of this row and I have not done that so I'm gonna have to keep trucking on that next another WIPCO project for June that I have not finished well not finished my goal and I think you all can understand that I've been moving <laughs> and moving is stressful and time-consuming and so cross stitch unfortunately was not like my top priority recently. But it's been nice to still get in some stitching here and there. So this is my next WIPCO project for June. I'm stitching this piece. Woo, this is challenging to hold with all the wrinkles. Um, I'm stitching this piece for my grandmother. She loves butterflies. And uh, my goal for June was to stitch two butterflies. And so I started on this one and we'll have to finish this one and do one more. This piece kind of bummed me out for a little while. I don't know why. I don't, I don't think I was loving the fabric for a while. Um, and now I'm really loving stitching on this. I think I'm just getting more used to working on linen because this is a linen from Color and Cotton in a colorway that I don't remember. It's like sea breeze maybe or something. Okay. Oh, and this, I didn't, I keep not telling you what fabric I'm using. Um, my Ark of the Universe piece is on a piece of color and cotton even weave that was a limited edition. Okay. Last but la not least, on the whips, we have my Harry Potter covers collage from Fox and Teacup. Um, and I will put a picture here of what that will look like. Um, and Fox and Teacup just released a modification to this pattern uh, that they sent out to anybody who had previously purchased it and removed JK Rowling's name from the bottom. So I have a long time until I get there to decide if I want to do the modification or if I want to do it as originally charted. Um, I'm tempted to keep it as originally charted because that's what the books look like, but it is a little bit compelling to remove her name. So I don't know. We'll see. Again, I have a long time to decide, but this is where it looks now and I was working on the Order of the Phoenix section and I did a bunch of that white and blue and there's a bunch of like grays and yellows and weird colors in the oh come on please focus in the O I'm just out of focus now there we go so yeah, I'm loving every second of stitching on this piece. This is so fun. And I have a lot more to go. So I get to keep having fun. <laughs> I am stitching this on 18 count Ada, two over two. Um, I probably won't, uh, that's the same as my piano, I think. They're both 18 count Ada, two over two. Um, I don't think I'll do that again. I don't hate it. I'm not like miserable stitching on it. It's just, 
I think I would prefer stitching with a fewer number of threads or on a 16 count or on like one over one on on a higher count fabric okay so we've now covered all of my projects that I've worked on we have now made it to haul and oh boy I have a lot <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so overwhelming how much I have. Every single day, packages arrive, and my boyfriend is like, you have another one? <laughs> like, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, there are a few things that have contributed to the amount of haul I have. Um, one was that the pattern for the Frogworts retreat was released. I believe there will be a way to acquire it later from the Black Needle Society, but I don't know for sure what that will be or when that will be. Um, there are seven parts of it planned, but only the first part has been designed. So I'll put in a picture of it here. I'm so excited to stitch this. I cannot wait. I'm absolutely in love with this design. Um, but I went on a wild chase for fabric and floss because I'm trying to get everything in in time for the retreat. It It's not going to happen. Sorry, I'm getting texts. Um, it's not going to happen. <laughs> My fabric's not going to get here. I tried to buy some other options for fabric and I don't like any of them for this particular project. So of course I put in all this effort to like get floss from eight different places and it doesn't matter because I can't start it yet. So that's a bummer. Um, there are challenges for the retreat where you get points for your house and there were a lot of points for finishing this piece during the retreat. So I was really going for that, but I don't want to like rush through and pick something that I'm not happy with just for points and then be stuck with that choice for six more parts <laughs> because this is going to be a really big piece. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to stitch it all in one fabric or, um, or on multiple. I think I'm going to do multiple pieces. Um, it's like a band sampler. But it, I want them all to match. <laughs> and so I don't want to go with a fabric that I'm not super happy with or a fabric that would be hard to get again. So I'm, I have something ordered. It's going to take a few weeks to get here. It's not going to be here in time. I'm really bummed but I'm gonna have to be okay with it. <laughs> the other reason I did a bunch of shopping is that um, I plan to participate in the Representation Matters Sal, and of course I was not prepared with stash to stitch on what I wanted to stitch on, and so I made some orders, and I thought things were gonna get here, like the Sal started on Juneteenth on Friday, and I thought things were going to maybe get here the following Monday. And so um, I would just be a couple of days late. And the fabric has only finally shipped now. And it is, what is it? It's the 1st of July. So, I mean, that's the state of things right now in the pandemic. I totally get it. But that was a bit of a bummer too. And that was, again, a situation where I didn't want to compromise on the fabric just so that I could get it quickly. Um, I'm not interested in that. I'm going to stitch on these things for a long time and then I'm going to live with them on my walls after that. I really want something that I'm going to be happy with. And then, of course, I did a bunch of shopping just for fun because I saw things that I wanted. I also, you know, would buy... I'd need three skeins of thread from this maker or this seller, and so then I would also buy some charts from them. <laughs> and, oh, I need three skeins from that one, and so I'll buy some charts from them. Because, <laughs> you know, you, you've got one seller that's got eight flosses, and one seller that's got three, and <laughs> that's just the state of things right now. <laughs> and it has caused quite a bit of chaos. <laughs> so, 
Uh, I've got some digital pieces. I know for the last few videos I keep saying I'm not going to show my digital pieces because I'm going to do um, a, a stash dive, which I'm still planning to do. I promise I will still do that. Um, but I'm getting sick of waiting showing you things, so I'm going to put pictures in of those. And then hopefully when I'm able to make color printouts of those the covers of my digital pieces, then I'll actually be able to show them to you physically. So, um, I follow Lindy Stitches, her newsletter, and she is releasing a three-part sal. I have not started it yet, um, but this is what part one will look like. That's all that's out so far as of today. Um, and so I'm looking forward to stitching that one. Uh, another, that one's, that one was free. Um, another freebie that I got um, was Blackbird by Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. Um, this is probably one of my favorites that I got uh, for a topical cause. And I'm really, really excited to stitch that one. I actually have something kitted up for it. Um, let's see, I put this in my, my bird bag from Judy. And so I'm trying to decide between two pieces of Ada. This is a good excuse to use some Ada because it's just, you know, just complete stitches. So I've got this, um, it's called J from Picture This Plus, 16 count. And it's got some beautiful, you know what? Let me take it out. It's got some beautiful modeling in it. So I could do this. I also have a piece of 16 count Nessie. I think Nessie is also picture this plus, although this doesn't say. Um, and so this is a paler blue, but I think both of these would be really pretty. Let me put them up next to each other. So I've got a darker color and a lighter color. I'm tempted to go with the darker color just because I feel like there are less opportunities, fewer opportunities to go for a darker color, um, but I don't know, we'll see. Um, I also ordered from Cardinal Needleworks the LNS Near Me run by Angela from Color and Cotton, and I ordered a lot of things from Cardinal Needleworks, but let me grab this one to show you. Wait, nope, not in there. Um, where is it? Here we go. So I ordered Blackbird, which is actually brown <laughs> and it's like a black to brown but there's a lot of brown at least in this skein um, this is from classic color works and so I think on this dark blue it'd be really lovely it would be lovely on the light blue too I don't know it's showing up really black on camera but I'm seeing a lot more brown in person I don't think that bothers me though um, I think I'm gonna do that this dark with the blackbird floss. Okay. Next, I got um, some free patterns from Jennifer from Whistle Stop Stitcher. And she is just cranking them out. She is really on fire. Um, and... I have one of them kitted up. Um, I'm gonna show pictures here of what I got. Um, but I have a Stitcher's Places in the Resistance kitted up. And I'm gonna use, um, I got like a grab bag of fabric from Color and Cotton from Cardinal Needleworks. And so I got this really weird piece of fabric. And I have, I 
think it's really cool, but I had no idea what to do with it. It's like a purpley taupe with a bunch of orange <laughs> over top of it. And so I found this thread in my stash, Cinnamon, from The Gentle Art. And I think that's going to look really pretty over top. And because it's just letters, I think this is a really good excuse to do something kind of strange. And I put that in my Fantastic Bee sleeve from uh, Love You More Studios because, because I believe that you can still like a thing while also being part of the resistance. Okay, next we have Ingleside Imaginarium. I think I said that right. Um, I got a couple of things from them. First, they are doing a pattern called A Lady Named Ella, and they're basing that off of a beautiful drawing. I don't remember the, the original artist, but I will try and put it somewhere on the screen, maybe. Um, and so they were asking for donations, and if you sent them proof of your donation, then they would send you the chart. So... I donated both to Color of Change and to the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Those were, they had some options for places that you could donate to. I donated to both of those and, um, which I hope goes without saying that like, I'm not trying to flex by saying I donated to both of those. I'm just, I'm in a position to donate and so I feel that it's my duty to do so. Um, and I have some fabric options for this. I'm really excited to start this. I think it's an absolutely beautiful chart. And I, I really want to do it justice. I have to stitch this on um, an even weave or a linen because there are a ton of fractional stitches in it. And I think when there are fractional stitches, I really prefer an even weave over a linen because uh, a linen can make the, the, the unevenness of a linen can make the fractional stitches look kind of weird. Um, so here are my fabric options. I've got, um, a 32 count even weave from Lakeside Needlecraft in the colorway Granite. And that is like a bluish gray. It's a little bit bluer than it's showing up on camera. Um, and it's speckled. And this is a printed fabric. You can see that's at the back. And I'm stitching on another fabric from Lakeside Needlecraft for the woodland sow that I started during Mania. And I'm absolutely loving this fabric, so I would be really excited to stitch on it again. Then I've got a 32 count Sprite um, Lugana. Yep. Um, and that's like a purpley, like a mottled purple. And the chart is mainly like whites and grays and then brown for her face skin tone and so I think any of these fabrics would be really beautiful with that. Uh, then I've got a 32 count uh, Lugana in Nessie from Picture This Plus. So this is the same color as the eight I showed earlier and just for fun I'm going to put these up next to each other and you can see that they are not the same color. They're very close but they definitely take the dye differently. And I have a huge piece of this absolutely massive um but I think this would be really really pretty for that pattern as well so if you have thoughts or opinions on which fabric I should use please put them in the comments down below I'm definitely happy to hear them so here's here's the colors that I'm thinking for a lady named Ella Ooh. there we go so while I was getting that pattern from Ingleside Imaginarium, I was also looking at what else they have available. And I found this really cool free pattern that they had on their website of a dragon menorah. And I have a wonderful friend who is um, obsessed with dragons. I wouldn't say obsessed. She loves dragons and also celebrates Hanukkah. And so I thought that would be really fun to stitch for her. Okay. I believe last but not least on the um, topical 
stitching <laughs> that I acquired uh, was the MLK sampler from Stone Street Stitch Works. That is a very difficult designer to say. Stone Street Stitch Works. So I got that pattern. Um, I started kitting it up and I'm gonna change the colors a little bit. I'm gonna add a couple actually. So these are the flosses that I am thinking about. I'm adding in a blue. Um, I'm adding in some greens. And I believe this is these two browns were called for. And this red, ooh, that is showing up super fire engine on camera, but it is much um is much prettier. It's like not terracotta, but it's like it bends more toward that kind of color. Um, I don't remember if this was the call for red or not. Anyway, and then I'm going to stitch that on some 18 count Ada from Color and Cotton in the colorway Fennel Seed. So, oh gosh, there's no good way to show you these. I should have like put this on a ring or something. Here you go. So that's what I'm going to do for the MLK sampler. And then also, <laughs> while I was there, <laughs> I got um, a piece called Thankful, which I will show a picture of. And then I also got a freebie called Thank Wool, <laughs> which is a turkey. And I love it. It's great. <laughs> okay. Now let's go into, you know, some more haul. <laughs> let's talk about Cardinal Needleworks because I ordered them from them three times since we last spoken. Yeah, a lot. Sorry, I just have too many things. Hold, please. Okay. So first I ordered from them in an attempt to kit up Peacock Keeper um, and I actually have that one to show you. This is Peacock Keeper by Lindy Stitches and I'm going to stitch this for the Representation Matters cell. And so I ordered some threads to kit that up. I ordered them from Color and Cotton. This is mostly classic color works with a little bit of gentle art mixed in. Um, and I believe I am all set for floss for this pattern. Um, I just need my fabric. I ordered the called for from 123 Stitch. It has now shipped, but it's not going to be here till like Monday. Then I ordered some floss for um, the Frogworts piece that I showed earlier and so that's what these are I just Angela puts these so neatly into bags that I can't bring myself to take them out <laughs> I will now that I've showed them this one is also for frogworts this order was necessary because um we got the supplies list beforehand before they released what the pattern looked like and so I ordered I ordered these threads and then they released a uh, correction and then I needed this one. <laughs> um, that's all right, that's all right. Just an excuse to buy more things. Um, so then I, while, so this was in my first order from Cardinal Needleworks, I decided to uh, kit up something else while I was there. I'm like, well, if I'm ordering stuff, I might as well. <laughs> And you all know that ever since I got this, I have been dying to start it. This is Our Hearts by Brenda Gervais. And so I've got the threads here to get that started. And I believe I have some fabric ordered. I think. I think I have some fabric ordered for this. Okay. Then I literally had to put my haul in one of these so that I could keep it all organized for you guys. <laughs> um, let's see, from Cardinal Needleworks, where is that one? 
Here we go. So from Cardinal Needleworks. Oh, I also, I forgot to show. Um, Angela was so kind and threw in, in one of my three orders, <laughs> some gift floss for me. Um, I don't think this says what colors they are, but it's a beautiful pink and blue. This is very like, very summery colors. I will definitely find something to do with those. Okay, so this is one, one of the half page charts that doesn't fit in a half page sleeve that I mentioned before. Um, this is Hot Cocoa from Madame Chantilly. So this is all still from Cardinal Needleworks. Next I got uh, from Bent Creek, I got, what is this called? Snowbound. This is in a half page sleeve, but it's smaller than a half page. And I think Michelle Bendy Stitchy stitched that one recently and I really liked it. So when I saw it on Cardinal Needleworks website, I was like, oh, I should get that. Then another half page chart that doesn't fit in a half page sleeve. We've got uh, from the Blackberry Rabbit, we have the Monarch. I think this is so pretty. Then from Lindy Stitches, I put this in, in the sleeve upside down. I'll have to fix that later. <laughs> from Lindy Stitches, and there's a bird literally right outside my window. Uh, we have Stars Bright. And I absolutely adore the saying on this one. I really, really love it. And so I will be, I don't know, stitching that eventually. I got to finish the other Lindy Stitches bird piece that I have started <laughs> first. Um, then from Plum Street Samplers, I got Halloween Delivery. And those of you who may have watched me for a little while know that I'm not super into Halloween, but this piece really caught my eye. I don't know if you can see. So it's like a stagecoach with pumpkins inside it, which is super cute and not like really overtly Halloween. It's not like, you know, witches and stuff, um, which like I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. So you think I would like that, but um, I'm really not into like classic Halloween stuff. But there is this huge, fantastic bird carrying the coach. And the stagecoach is being driven by a ghost. You can see that all that is stitched there is his top hat, which is brilliant. It's co this completely brilliant. <laughs> I absolutely love this. I was talking to a friend, though, about the date that's on this because I can't tell if there's significance in this date. So, oh. It says on the back, did you know, from 1784 to the mid-1800s, Great Britain used post coaches to deliver mail. These mail coaches were faster than stage coaches in that they only stopped for the delivery of mail and not for passengers. Eventually, they were replaced with the railway system. Okay. So now that I know that, I'm totally hyped to stitch 1784. Before I knew that, I was like, what is with the date on this? How, like, how was this chosen? <laughs> So thank you very much to Plum Tree Samplers for including that information on the chart because I think that's super cool and now I will definitely stitch that date. Okay. I'm out of focus again. Please focus on me. Please. Come on. Focus on me back here. There we go. Okay. Now moving on to, sorry, I'm sure that is super loud. My bad. Um, now from one, two, three stitch, again with the crinkle. Oh God. I just have so many things, you guys. I can't contain it all. <laughs> okay, so from one, two, three stitch, I got You Are Loved by My Big Toe. 
And this one is probably going to be a soon start. This is going to be a gift for a friend who needs a bit of a reminder. Next, I got um, from Needle Bling Designs, favorite hello. And this is a strong contender for uh, a wedding stitch for a good friend of mine. I've got another option coming in the mail and I'll decide sometime soon which one I'm going to do. Um, I like them both and they would definitely both work for other people as well. So I thought just, you know, why not buy them both? Because <laughs> that's been my mood lately. I don't know if I mentioned this already, but... Um, my June spending for cross stitch, like double my my last most expensive month in the last six months because I tracked for stitch from stash, which I lost a long time ago, but I keep track. <laughs> and June was just <laughs> okay. Then from Heartstring Samplery, this is still from One Two Three Stitch. I got Hibernation Day. And this one is like kind of hard to see. And I got it completely for what it says, not for how it looks, although I like how it looks. This is way more prim than I usually go, but you know, I'm getting more into that stuff anyway. And this says, I love the snap of winter air and snowflakes on my face, how snow drifts make the world disappear without a trace. I'll take a day dressed in pajamas in a room without a view if I can spend the day curled up next to you. Let's have a hibernation day, me and you. And yes, please. I love that. <laughs> All right. And then I got a Buttons and Beads Mill Hill kit of a Baltimore Oriole. I got this for two reasons. One, because I am from outside of Baltimore. So um, this is my state bird. Can anyone else hear that car alarm? Okay. Um, and it comes with a very cute B button. But the other reason I got this is because my boyfriend's mom has been having Baltimore Oriole visitors in her backyard. Uh, she lives in Massachusetts. And she has been feeding them. Apparently, they really like jelly. And they also like the color orange. So if you take an orange you cut it in half and then you spread like fruit jelly over the top of it or jam or something over the top of the orange they're attracted to the color of the orange and they come and eat the jelly and she's a photographer and so she loves to take pictures of them eating in her yard so I thought it would be fun to get that to stitch for her or maybe for myself I don't know we'll see how I'm feeling okay Moving on. We're still in haul, guys. This is going to be a while. We're not even halfway done. <laughs> what happened to me this month? Okay, let's next talk about... What did I do? Okay, I accidentally combined two things. Okay. Next, we have three owl threads. Um, and real quick, I just want to say... Trisha, who runs 3L Threads, has the most amazing customer service. I had to change my address with her for my nest egg, which um, she did happily and easily. And then when things got a little bit confused with uh, what I selected for my nest egg, she was super great about helping figure that out and get that straightened out. And then I had a question for her about something that I ordered and she was super responsive and very helpful with that too. So man, Trisha, you're so great. Um, I have my nest egg here actually. I got that for the first time. So I ordered Gentle Art and I signed up for that a while ago, but it was delayed because of the world being on fire. And so I believe this is April and May, I think. Um... So we've got Cherry Bark, which is amusing because this is the thread that, um, that I ran out of for um, Stay Safe at Home and Stitch. And Laura Landis sent me some more. <laughs> and I think this color may actually match what I had 
before better than what Laura sent me. So I'll use what Laura sent me for something else and I'll use this to finish up that piece. Which is funny because I forgot this was in here. I have so much haul. I forgot what I had. <laughs> I forgot this was in here. And when I ran out of Cherry Bark before, I set a notification on 123 Stitch for it coming back in stock. And I just got an email today saying it came back in stock. And so I was like, ooh, maybe I should get another skein just to see if it matches the color that I had better than the one that Laura sent me. And then when I went to order it, they were out again. <laughs> I'm really glad I didn't order it again because I already had some. Um, I also got espresso beans. Sorry, I'm showing these you these out of order. Um, Ondive, which I already had a bunch of, but seems to be pretty popular. Um, dungarees, which is a beautiful blue color. Then we've got driftwood, which I think I already had a skein of and, uh, didn't know why I got it. <laughs> Dried thyme. I really like this one. Another beautiful blue. We have deep sea. And we've got deep forest. And that is much greener than it's showing. It's like green to gray. Then we have chives and daisy, which is like a yellowish cream color. Let's see if I can show these all together. Probably no chance. So that was my nest egg from Trisha. Then, um, from her Etsy shop, I got Good Rusty Merry Gentleman from Lindy Stitches. I really like this one. This one also has skin tones that are not white. So I could start this for the Representation Matter style as well. Um, I, Stephanie consistently designs with people who are not white. And I think that's fantastic. Because... As, as I was looking for something to stitch for this sow, there's not a lot of options, which I already knew, but I was kind of hoping that with the hashtag that I would start seeing like tons of things that I had never seen before. And that did not happen. Um, so that kind of bums me out. But also, I think this sow is fantastic because it's bringing awareness to the fact that we would happily stitch people who are not white and designers we will we will give you our money very very excitedly for designing people who are not white um and also that it's okay as a white person to stitch someone who's not white as long as you're being respectful about the content that you're stitching um so again from 3L threads I got this kit from Tiny Modernist and it says, no problema. And I just think that's hilarious. <laughs> I, I have no other reason why I got this other than I think it's hilarious. And I actually went to her, to Trisha's shop specifically looking for this um, because I had seen it only one other place. I think this was market last year. Um, I'd seen it only one other place and thought it was funny, but they didn't have any available anymore or something. I don't remember. Are they? Yeah, I don't remember. But so then I was like, oh, I got to find somewhere who has that. And Trisha had like maybe one and I got it. Um, there was only Ada available. And I don't know if you can tell it's like a pink Ada. I have not opened it. So I don't really know if it's modeled like the picture or if that was just the linen, but I think it'll be cute anyway. And I think this comes with everything. This comes with fabric floss. All of it really cute and I kind of like that better than no drama llama because I think drama is kind of a weighted word but no problem is adorable <laughs> okay so this was the thing that I ugh, come on please focus um, this was the thing that I messaged Trisha asking about um, because when I saw this, I was like, I need that. And that is um, from Jeanette Douglas. 
This is called Inspiring Stitches, I think. And it's got some black work. It's got a bunch of specialty stitches. It has an alphabet and I'm still obsessed with it. So it must be great. The colors are just stunning. Like, I don't think this is doing it justice. This picture here. The flowers are beautiful. The black work is beautiful. We've got some cute little animals over here. I'm completely obsessed with it. I want to start it yesterday. Um, so I got the, the accessory pack that came with it. Um, and it comes with the needlepoint silk, the Gloriana threads, classic color works, rainbow gallery, um, and the Mill Hill beads. So this was not inexpensive. <laughs> Um, I want to say it cost me like $80 for both the, the chart and the thread pack. Worth it. Totally worth it. I cannot wait to start that. I have a smaller Jeanette Douglas that I'm actually going to be showing later in this video that I want to start first because it's a little bit simpler. <laughs> and so I want to have a little bit of practice before I start that one because when I started I wanted to do it right but oh oh I can't wait I cannot wait okay next I ordered from Top Knot Stitcher Shop and I ordered from here because I noticed that they had gotten in stock Oz Quaker or Quaker Oz. I think Garrett from Coffee Stitcher calls it Quaker Oz. Um, that's what it looks like. This is from RATM, I think is how you say that, RATM. And this designer stopped designing for a long time and their turts were not available anymore. Um, and so I like had my eyes out on eBay for this chart for a while and um, never really saw a good opportunity for it. And then RATM came back and they're designing again and they have their old charts available again. And so I was super, super excited to snatch this up. Um, I, I am hoping that the reds are not quite as like neon orange as they look in this picture. Um, but if they are, I will have to sub something else because I'm not stitching that like neon orange color. Um, and Garrett made a couple of modifications and I might steal one or two of them. So I was excited to find that. And then while I was there, I just got more things <laughs> because why not? So I got um, Ink Circles market release from this year after the roses. And this is probably one of my favorite things that Ink Circles has ever done. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the mandalas, but this is stunning and the colors of this are stunning. I love that. Next just because I've had this on my list forever and I was finally like, all right, I'm just doing it. And ooh, that's this way. From the blue flower, I got Night Walk Down. And also a bunch of my friends have started this and I am jealous, <laughs> feeling left out. <laughs> and that's a thick chart. This is big. This is like, how big is this? 256 by 151. Good gracious. That's big. This is one that might be a really good opportunity to do a skin conversion for because the amount of skin showing is like that much. <laughs> so I could convert that pretty easily. And so maybe I'll do, I don't know. I'll have to play around with that. Skin conversions scare me when there's like a bunch of like highlighting and shadows and stuff, but that one should be pretty easy. It's just one color. So then I got from, hello from Liz Matthews. I went a little 
nuts on her charts. I got Mayflower's tree. I'm not a big flower person, but I, the color of this fabric is stunning. This is one that I will like absolutely for sure have to get um, this exact fabric that it's called for. It's called for on 36 count sanguine from Weeks Dye Works. Um, and just the, the white is so pretty on top of that. Oh, I just love it. Yeah, so that one's a little bit, a little bit outside of what you would normally see from me, but I really like it. Then I got Partridge in a Pear Tree. This is not outside what you would normally see from me. <laughs> that color green, uh, I love it. The yellow, I love it. I love pears. Um, I don't know why. I have a lot of pear things. Um, oh, I do know why. Because I pear program at work. And so I think pears are funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's stunning and I love it. And I may get the other ones when she releases them for the 12 Days of Christmas, or I may not because, like, I don't really care about 12 Days of Christmas. Um, I just really like that chart specifically. So then also from Liz, I got a loft because this chart is incredible. It's incredible. It's stunning. I love it. It's so creative the way she did it on two different pieces of linen. I think the hot air balloons are beautiful. The trees are really cool looking. I love everything about this. And when I bought this, I was like, I don't know what that is at the top. Maybe I would cut it off. And then I realized it was a, is it a telescope or some sort of scope? And then it was 25 francs because this happened in France. This was the first hot air balloon flight, I believe, that happened in France. So I was like, well, Nope, that's really cool. I got to stitch that too. <laughs> I really like that. Okay. We're still not done, folks. Next I ordered... Sorry, Crinkle. Next I ordered from Fire Poppies. And this was for frog, the Frogwarts piece. Um, I got some threads for that. I got these right here and witching hour i think is a new thread this is from gentle art i think that's a new one um and then some of these i thought maybe would work for the first part and i just don't think they're right for what i want them for i think they're beautiful though and they will definitely be used so i got this piece of just neutral this is a 36 count linen um, in the colorway Dusty Road from Seraphim. And that's not a fabric designer that I, or um, dyer that I am familiar with. But I think it's really nice. Um, and I think I have an idea for what to do with it. I'm going to put Jeanette Douglas's um, Pineapple Welcome on this because it calls for a 36 count and I think this would be beautiful. Now, um, shockingly, because this is me and I'm just in an ordering things mood lately, I ordered um, the threads for this. Well, some of the threads. I think I'm gonna do it in, it only calls for like five colors. So there's this like red down at the bottom and then there's these, there's like two colors or three colors of green and then two colors of yellow. Um, the, most of them are like um, needlepoint ink, I think. And then these two yellows are some other kind of silk. So I'm gonna do the yellows in the silk called for and then I'm gonna do the rest in DMC. I think. But so I ordered the two yellows. Um, next from Fire Poppies, I, did I say these were from Fire Poppies? I think I did. Um, I really like ordering from them. I have really good experiences ordering from them. I bought 40 count Confederate Grey because apparently this fabric's amazing and I think it's pretty. Um, that's from Weeks. 
and I gotta up my 40 count stash. And then also from, oh no, I thought this was also from Seraphim, but this doesn't have the dyer on it, so I don't know what, who this is from. This is 32 count linen smoky white, and this is another one that I thought might go well for the Frogwarts retreat, and I just, it's not really what I was looking for, but I got a big piece of it. This is still folded in half. It's a pretty big piece. <laughs> um, so I'm sure there will be something fantastic that I'll put on that. It's a pretty good neutral. Okay. Then I ordered from um, Stitchery Express. And from them, there was one particular gloss that I was looking for for Frogwarts, and they happened to have it, and that was Cherry Cobbler. And then, um, the Frogwarts piece has a bunch of Birdie Bots beans in them, and the called for is a very variegated color, and they're all called for in the same color, and I didn't really like that look. So, um, since then, uh, Katie has actually released, um, a bunch of color options for the beans, but, um, oh, I also needed Midnight. They had that too. Um, so I decided to just snatch up a bunch of fun, bright colors for the beans, um, and... Then I've got some, like, weird ones, too. Like, this one is Polywog, I think. Um, so, yeah. I think the Birdie Bats beans will look really cool in some of these colors. I haven't exactly decided if I'm going to use them all or what, but that's what I got those for. I would not have, like, just done that. I probably would have just done DMC, but I needed Cherry Cobbler and Midnight. And so I just, while well, I was there, because, you know... Um, okay. Then from Silver Needle, uh, I went to Silver Needle, well, went to their website for the purpose of looking for this chart because I found it when I was looking at other things on Erica Michael's website. And when I saw this, I was like, I need to find someone who carries this. And that is Hanukkah Bits from Erica Michaels. As I've said before on my channel, um, I celebrate both Hanukkah and Christmas. Um, I come from a mixed faith family. And I don't find a lot of Hanukkah stuff. And when I do, I get really excited. And I, I think this one is really well done. You know, some stuff are like, here's a menorah and goodbye. <laughs> and this one I think is really pretty. So while I was there, I also got um, Tea is for Turkey from Heartstring Samplery. I've liked this one ever since um, Stephanie from Lindy Stitches showed this. I'm creating quite a precarious pile over here. Let's hope it doesn't all fall on the floor. Um, and then also from Heartstring Samplery, I got Flanders Fields Biscornu. And that is a poppies design, um, I assume, for commemorating World War One. And I went to, um, oh, this is called for on Confederate Gray. It does not look like that from the picture. If you take this picture and compare it to the piece of Confederate gray that I have. So I don't know if I'll actually do that, but maybe. Maybe I'll do a floss toss and see. Um, anyway, so I went to the World War I Museum in Kansas City last year and really learned a lot. And I already liked poppies. I liked them in general, and then I liked them because of um, Wizard of Oz. And so now I like them extra because now I understand why they are meaningful to 
um, remembering World War One. Okay. We're still not done, folks. I'm going to do do a digital one, put that on the screen while I'm out of focus here. Um, <laughs> and everyone has seen that Long Dog put out um, a free a free chart called Pandemic. And come on. There we go. Um, free chart called Pandemic. And that's probably one of my favorite Long Dogs I've ever seen. Um, and it was free. So I snatched it up for sure. And I'm going to do it with um, Laura and Keisha from the Pattern Queens. Next year, they are doing uh, a long dog sal for the whole year, just like they're doing uh, for Hawk Run Hollow this year. And so they're inviting other people to do it with them. And I was planning to do, I have a long dog sampler, like that is actually um, a sampler, like a sampler style. I don't know how to explain it um, in my stash. And I was going to do that because I already had it and like it. Um, but now that I have this, this feels more of like a traditional long dog to me. And so I think I'm going to do that instead. Okay, then um, I ordered, I fell down the rabbit hole of looking up counted canvas because I had, I've discovered it before. It looks really cool. I really like doing specialty stitches. Um, I didn't really understand what it was. And then um, Stitch and Mommy started kitting up a counted canvas piece and I started to understand what the difference was between that and cross stitch. And I've been wanting to try one. And so I didn't want to get like an enormous one to start out for my first try because I didn't know how I would like it. So I went on the hunt and I found this one. This is Color Delights Sea Foam by Needle Delights Originals. And I decided to get the kit because I know nothing about these materials and need a little bit of help. <laughs> So I got the kit. So here's all the flosses that it calls for and the canvas and you can see the canvas is this size So it's not too too big And there were definitely some other ones I saw that I also liked that I will be keeping an eye on if I enjoy doing this piece I will probably be back for more Okay Next Because obviously I'm not done with haul yet Good gracious. Okay. Here we go. Um, so, when I saw Light by um, Barbara Anna, when that was first released, I was like, I love that. I need that. And I went and got it immediately. And then I saw Michelle Bendy Stitchy start it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's the way that piece was meant to be stitched. And so, um, because she's fantastic and I have to be just like her, <laughs> just kidding, um, I got a piece of 32 count Havana, um, which is what she's stitching on. She's stitching on Havana for that. Um, and yeah, this is a linen. Um, and then she's doing it in sulkies. And so I was waiting patiently on her Patreon. She's been posting conversions that she's done. And I've been waiting patiently for her to post that one. And she hasn't yet, probably because she hasn't finished it. Um, and so finally, I messaged her and I was like, would you please send me your conversion? Because I love it. And she was like, oh, yeah, sure. So I don't, I don't feel comfortable sharing it uh, without her permission. But um, if you want to just message her and ask her for it. Um, she may be willing to share it with you as well. Um, and so I went straight to the Sulky website and purchased exactly what she used. No questions asked. So I got, oh no, got all these here. And I believe they're all solid colors except for this yellow is variegated. And there is no, there is absolutely no graceful way to show these. Um, so Sulky comes in two weights of cotton. I, I had to like research this a little bit because I didn't really understand it yet. Um, so, hold on, let me grab the one I dropped on the ground. Okay, Sulky comes in two weights of cotton, 12 and 30. 
And so the 12 is thicker than the 30. Um, and so I got 12 for, for Barbara Anna's light. That should work right off of the spool with one, just one strand on 32 count. Um, but then I got, I got researching about the weights and which was, which would be good for what. And I found the 30 weight. That's what this is, right? Does it not say anywhere on here? There we go. 30 weight, um, sulky is much finer than that. And I read that 30 weight was good for black work, which I really enjoy doing. So I got a spool of black and I got a spool of this really cool variegated blue green. And I'm going to try that for black work. And I'm actually, um, I've never done a variegated thread for black work either. And so I think this is a good excuse to try that. So I'm going to, so I think, I think the 12 weight is equivalent to two strands of cotton and the 30 weight is equivalent to one strand of cotton. So that's why it's good for black work. Um, so I recently acquired Peppermint Purple's, um, it was a new release recently, um, and it's a set of black work frames with uh, alphabets to go in the middle. And so I think I'm gonna pick one of those and use this variegated one. All right. Now, I got a couple of needle minders as well. I got, speaking of Peppermint Purple, Peppermint Purple just released needle minders. So I got their needle minder. And then I got from Just So Heavenly, I got this one that looks like the house from Up. So that's super cute. Okay. We have hit the end of Cross Stitch Hall. Now we're going to talk about pins. I know this video is running long, but I just want to, I want to show you all my pins because I love them. So first I got some happy mail from my friend Athena from Stitching with Friends. She went to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Uh, she knows how much I love the Wizarding World. We have bonded a little bit over that. And uh, she also knows how much I love Harry Potter in general um, and that I am a Hufflepuff. And so she sent me one of their new pins. And I absolutely love this pin. Thank you so much, Athena. She was worried that I already had this and I do not already have this. So really, really super thrilled about that. Um... Next, from, from Nimbus Designs, um, I've got a really glittery um, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes pin. Then I got uh, the Ford Anglia, and it says, Bed's empty? No note, car gone. I love that, that's hilarious. And then finally from Nimbus Designs, I got the wardrobe that the bug art comes out of in book three. Okay, next. Next we have um, some pins that I got when I was looking for, oh geez, from, uh, I was looking for black pin makers and pins, okay, focus issues fixed. Um, okay, so uh, I ha went on the hunt for black pin makers and um, pins supporting black people and black content, um, and so I absolutely love Miles Morales and Into the Spider-Verse and Ultimate Spider-Man. So I got a Miles Morales pin. 
and which shockingly I didn't have yet. Um, and then also from Into the Spider Verse, I got a graffiti spider. And then um, from oh the sorry the graffiti spider is from J J Huddy. I don't know how to say that. That's where it's from. Then from Peace Prospects, I got this pin inspired by the Obama portraits, the official portraits. This pin is so cool. I love this pin. I was messaging uh, Michelle Garrett, Bendy Stitchy, about pins, and we were both like, oh yeah, this pin for sure. She got it as well. Um, then I got this one by art by QB. It's called Good Hair. All hair is good hair. And because my hair is curly, um, I follow a lot of um, black content creators for their curly hair content and have learned so much from them. And I know there's a lot of stigma about natural hair and that doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> because it's stunning. Um, and so I really want to be supportive of natural hair. Um, so next from Madeline Studio Gifts, I got... Uh, so there's going to be some language on this one. Close your ears if you don't like that. Um, fuck the patriarchy. <laughs> this is um, from Disney's movie Robin Hood. And I just saw this movie this year and I loved it. I was like, How, where have I been? This movie is fantastic. And a friend of mine just got this pin and I was like, oh, I need that. <laughs> Absolutely need that. Um, then from, also from Madeline Studio Gifts, I got this cute little, whoops, this cute little smiling cactus. And finally, I got a Van Gogh Starry Nights. Van Gogh is really how you say that, I guess. Because he is my favorite painter. If he was my favorite painter, you'd think I'd say his name correctly. Okay. Okay. Next. Um, from Swish and Flick. So this came from a Kickstarter that I supported. Um, if you've been watching my videos and seeing my pins, you know that Swish and Flick is one of my favorite designers. Um, and this Kickstarter was one of those, like sometimes when I support a Kickstarter, I'm like, oh, I want like two or three of those. This one was like, I have to have every single one of these. <laughs> so this was... Um, I believe all double door quotes. Um, so this one says, uh, words are our most inexhaustible source of magic, capable of both inflicting injury and remedying it. I love that. Um, next, we've got a Thestral. And that one says, it's also got like Hogwarts on the wing. Sorry, I didn't take these out of the package. Um, this one says, uh, let us step out into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. This one is of the King's Cross chapter and says, of course it is happening inside your head, but why on earth should that mean that it is not real? Then we've got crossed wands of, um, Harry and Voldemort. And it says, it is our choices that show us what we truly are far more than our abilities. Running out of places to put these on my desk. <laughs> Next, we have some memory vials. And they say, nitwit, blubber, oddment, tweak. Then we've got this beautiful, like, cloud with Hogwarts. The cloud has, like, a... Um, like a sparkly, almost pearly look to it. And it says, in dreams, we enter a world that's entirely our own. Um, and it's got like a sparkly snitch flying up here and some stars hanging from it. This is a really cool one. 
Then we've got this beautiful pride one and says, one can never have enough socks. I do love knitting patterns. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't even realize this was in here. It's like a super holographic sticker of the festival. Next, we've got the Dursley's front door with Harry sleeping on the doorstep. Um, and it says, it matters not what someone is born, but what they grow to be. Um... Next, oh, they included another uh, sticker, this one of Pride Dumbledore. Um, then we've got the um, like lectern from the movies. And it says, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. Which, I could be wrong, but I think is a movieism. Doesn't mean it's not good. And then this one, the sword might actually move on this one. Yeah, it does. Um, this one says, help will always be given at Hogwarts to those who ask for it. And the sword moves. So that was the switch, Swish and Flick Kickstarter. We're still going, folks. Next from Pure Dead Brilliant, and I put these in this pouch because um, I've showed it before, but I want to show it again. It's from the same maker, um, Pure, Pure Dead Brilliant, and it is topical as well because this was their Buffy Kickstarter, but before I show you the Buffy pins, I also got from them um, this Moaning Myrtle pin. She's real cute. So this is another one of the Kickstarters where I was like, I need every single one of these. So that is Mr. Pointy. Then we've got Love Makes You Do the Wacky with the Witch Pez. Then we've got um, Faith's Knife. And we've got I Love You Willow with the broken yellow crayon. This one might be my favorite one. Then we've got The Gentleman from Hush. And we have <laughs> The Earth is Doomed. This one might be my favorite one because it made me laugh. <laughs> the Earth is Doomed <laughs> with the vampire book. Um, and then finally, again with the language, prepare yourself, loves bitch with Spike. And also in that Kickstarter, I got stickers of all the pins. And that came free. I didn't pay for that. Free as in, you know, I paid for all the pins. <laughs> okay. We're still going, folks. Um... If you stuck me with me this long, boy oh boy. Um, so I ordered from Bunce and Bean. They do fantastic pins that are quite large and quite expensive. So they have a series of these um, HP in street. So this is Honeydukes and you can see they're so detailed. I know it's really not gonna focus on all the detail, but so, so detailed. Um, This one is Grimmel Place. Then we've got Madame Malkins. This is a new one. This is actually um, their HP, their like Hogwarts interior series. And this is Charms Class with um, the feather moves. Um, back to the street series, we've got the Daily Prophet office. And we've got Florian Fortescue. 
And then because I bought so many pins, <laughs> they sent me a free one. And it is a glow in the dark um, exploding bonbons. Okay. We're closing in. Two more pin makers to go. A lot of these were things that I bought like over time and have just now come in. But. Um, so from Muggleborn Sisters, y'all know, again, if you've been watching me for a little bit, that this is one of my favorite makers as well. Um, have a Biscuit Potter. got the leaky cauldron we've got honeyduke sweets um, this one I believe they threw in for free with my order it's just a butterbeer mug I have one that's similar to this from them but the foam is sparkly that one is just plain white Sorry, a bunch of crinkle apologies. Um, I have been waiting for this one. I pre-ordered this one and it took a long time to get to me. This is the Hufflepuff Common Room in a bottle. This is so detailed and I love it so much. Then um, this is a series of locations within Hogwarts. And so we have the Owlry. Um, then I got this one, and this is of Hogwarts and the Train with the Sunset. And then they've started releasing coins, so I got a couple of those as well. Um, this one, let me open these because they say different things on the back. This one says, Welcome to the Ministry of Magic. And it has the Ministry of Magic on one side. And then the guest entrance on the other. Um, ah, it says visitor's entrance around the edge and then says the number that you call. Um, then I got a coin for the flu network. And on the other side, it says speak loudly and clearly. And finally, I got one um, from Dumbledore's Army. And on the other side, it says, still recruiting, still fighting until the very end. And then this is why my order from them took so long, because I also pre-ordered this gorgeous mug in honeydukes colors i have one already in brown and uh, it took months for them to fill it and make them all and, and send them but i'm not even mad because they're gorgeous absolutely gorgeous i'm gonna put that in a safe place so it doesn't fall and break okay one more pin maker and then we're done guys um, I ordered from Mad Unicorn, and I'm in their, um, their Patreon club, but these were not from the club. Um, it's an owl standing on some books, and it says Spells and Potions. And we've got a Happy Birthday, Harry. This might have to be a gift for a friend who just had her birthday. Then... We've got um, Rapunzel's Castle from Tangled. There's another one of those that match. Sorry, got a crinkle for a second. Okay, um, I thought I got another one of those, but I guess that was it. 
Okay, so then um, from the Patreon club, I got the Draco pin. So that's got a snake and his wand and an apple and a feather. And it says advanced potions and defense against the dark arts. So then um, I supported the Kickstarter from Mad Unicorn and Stay Magical Studios. And so I got this very, very glittery Pygmy Puff. Very glittery. I got this Give Her Hell from Us, Peeves, um, Firework Snow Globe. Then I got this Weasley Snowstorms, like, perfume puff thing that's got the burrow inside of it. I love that one. Then I got, um, oh my god, the word for this left my brain. Uh... Decoy Detonator. I knew it would get there eventually. And it says Honk, which is adorable. And then I've got, um, it's got a little charm on it that says Wonder Witch. And these are um, First Love Beguiling Bubbles. That's a love potion. Super cute. Those are all the pins I bought. And now I'm out of focus again. Um, I read two books. <laughs> um, I read You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson, which I started talking about in my last video. Um, and I explained what that was about in my last video, so I'm not going to say it again. But I finished reading it and I absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. Um, I'll, I'll repeat this again. If you start it and you're not like super into it in the first few chapters, keep going because I promise it gets great. Um, then I read A Song Below Water by Bethany C. Morrow, and I really enjoyed that one. That one is, um, it got some fantasy, like, fantastical realism, um, and that was another one where I was a little unsure of it in the first couple of chapters, and I loved it. It was great, and if you're looking for a book that is, um, it the characters are black. It includes a lot of um, black culture and and touches on some issues related to that. It's not like about that. Whereas like The Hate You Give, I would say it would be about that. If you're looking for a YA novel that does a really good job of just making some great black teenage girl characters, uh, A Song Below Water is great. Okay, plants. Um, I have three outstanding WIPCO goals that have not been completed. I've got Pride and Prejudice, Piano, and Butterflies. So uh, I'm going to be working to complete those. Um, then I got the July polls. So we have Autumn Quakers got pulled. This one has very little progress, just a little bit up in the top corner. Um... And so I'm looking forward to bringing this back out again. Hopefully I like it a little bit better than I did before, but I've only stitched on it once. So um, I'm sure it'll just take a little bit of time for me to get used to it. Um, then I um, also for July, um, my Harry Potter covers was pulled again. It was actually a Christmas Carol that was pulled. But in my last video, I told y'all that I was switching that out for Harry Potter covers. So that's what I'll be working on in July. Um, and then I listed a bunch of awesome projects that are um, very topical to current events that I acquired recently. So some of those are really calling to me to start. Um, and I've also been really missing, I know I said this last time and I still haven't gotten back to it. I've been really missing my black work style from Peppermint Purple. So I'd really like to get back to that. And there's no way I get to Christmas in July. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> I have a very slight opportunity. Um, as I mentioned, I'm attending the Frogworks retreat put on by the Black Needle Society. 
and that's uh, next week. And they're doing some challenges associated with that. And there's a Christmas challenge in there. So I could choose to start something new. Or I could stitch on my Harry Potter covers collage. Because there's always a way to make Christmas fit with Harry Potter. Um, so we'll see how I'm feeling when we come to that. Um, I've got a lot of projects picked for that. Um, they're only going to get a little bit of progress each, but you're de they're definitely going to come out. Um, so projects that you haven't seen from me in a while are going to get maybe a, a little bit of love. So I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, this has been the longest video on the planet. Um, hopefully this doesn't happen to me again. <laughs> hopefully I don't buy this much stuff again. <laughs> hopefully I can fit this all into one file. <laughs> and upload it successfully. Um, if you are still here, thank you so much for sticking with me. I've had a blast filming this video. Um, and I hope you come back and hang out with me again in a much shorter video, hopefully. <laughs>